Chapter Three: Arabic Antarctic. What with the excitement of having the great admiral Drake speak to him over the radio, and his curiosity about the admiral's message to him, Mister Popper did not sleep very well that night. He did not see how he could possibly wait to find out what the admiral meant. When morning came. He was almost sorry that he had nowhere to go, no houses to paint, no rooms to paper. It would have helped to pass the time. Would you like the living room paper, Oliver? He asked Miss Popper. I have quite a lot of paper. Number eighty-eight left over from the major's house. I would not," said Miss Popper firmly. "The paper on now is plenty good enough." I am going to the first meeting of the ladies at a missionary society today, and I don't want any mess around to clean up when I get home. Very well, my love," said Mister Popham meekly, and he settled down with his pie, his globe, and his book of Antarctic adventures. But somehow, as he read today, he could not keep his mind on the printed words. His thoughts. Craft straying away to admiral Drake, what could he have meant by a surprise for a Mister Popper? Fortunately, for his peace of mind, he wouldn't have so very long to wait that afternoon while Miss Popper was still away at her meeting, and Julie and Bill had not yet come home from school. There was a knock ring at the front door. I suppose it is just the postman. I won't bother to answer it. He said to himself, "The bell rang again, a little louder this time." Rumbling to himself, Mister Popper went to the door. It was not the postman who stood there; it was an expressman with the largest box Mister Popper had ever seen. Parties by the name of Popper lived here. That's me. Well, here's the packet that's come as per express all the way from Antarctic. Girl, some jolly, I'd say. Mister Popper sighed the sweet ship and examined the box. It was covered all over with markings. And but at once, said one, "Keep cool." Said another. He noticed that the box was spun here and there with air holes. You can imagine that once he had the box inside the house, Mister Popper lost no time in getting the screw drive. For by this time, of course, he had guessed. That it was the surprise from Admiral Drake. He had succeeded in the removing the outer bars and part of the packing, which was a layer of dry ice. When the from the depth of the packing place, he suddenly heard a faint arc. He heard two steel. Surely, he had heard the sound before of the Drake's expedition movies. His hands were trembling so that he could scarce scarcely lift up that last of the wrappings. There was not the slightest doubt about it. It was a penguin. Mister Popper was pleased with delight, but the penguin was not pleased. Oh, it said again, and this time it held out its flippers and jumped over the parking debris. He was a stout little fellow, about two and a half feet high. Although it was about the size of a small child, he looked much more like a little gentleman, with his smooth white waist coat in front and his long back, black tail coat dragging a little behind. His eye was set in two white circles in his black hat. He turned his head from one side to the other, as first with one eye and then with the other. It is a little papa. Little papa has read. But penguins are extremely curious, and he soon found that it was true. For stepping out, the visitors began to inspect the house. Down the hall, it went and into the bedrooms with its strange, pompous, nicho strut. When it, or his Mister Popper had already begun to think of it, or his or to the bathroom, he looked around him with a pleased expression on his face. Perhaps, thought Mister Popper, all that wise tiling reminds him of the ice and snow of the south pole. Poor thing, maybe he's dirty. 
carefully, but the proper began to fill the bathtub with cold water. It was a little different, fickle because the exquisite bird kept kept drifting over and trying to brush the faucets with its sharp red beak. Finally, however, he succeeded in getting the trap over, since the penguin kept looking. Over, Mr. Popper picked it up and dropped it in. The penguin seemed not to mind. Anyway, you're not shy," said Mr. Popper. "I guess you got sort of used to playing around with those explorers of the pole." When he talked, the penguin had had it left of the bird. He drew out the stopper. He was just wondering what to do next when the leaves and Bill burst in from school. Papa, they shouted. Together at the bathroom door, what is this? It's a stout pearl penguin sent to me by Admiral Drake. Look, said Bill, it's marching. The delighted penguin was indeed marching, with little bleed knots of his handsome black hat. He was parading up and down the inside of the bathtub. Sometimes he seemed to be halting the step. It took six steps for the length, two steps. For the width, six steps for the length again, and two more for the width. For such a big bird, he takes awfully more steps," said Bill. "And look how his little black coat drags behind. He almost looks as if it were too big for him," said Charlie. But the bang wing was tired of marching. This time, when it got to the end of the top, it decided to run up the slippery curve. Then it turned and, with all chest flippers. The balkans down on its white stomach. They could see that those flippers, which were black on the outside like the sleeves of a tail coat, was white underneath. Cook, cook, says the penguin. Try its new game again and again. What's its name, Papa? Asked Dolly. Cook, cook, says the penguin, sliding down once more on his glossy white stomach. It sounds something like cook. Said Mr. Popper. Why that is, of course, we call him Cook, Captain 